Greetings and welcome to Your Inspirations. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life, and in this video we're going to take a close look at the Knit Wrap Over Swancho. Now this is a really high fashion piece with some densely textured stitches. It has a, a short sleeve that runs from the elbow to the wrist, um, and it comes in three different sizes. As is often the case here on Your Inspirations, you can circle or just use the color coding for the size you want to make. We used Pat Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. We used a dark gray mix, but you of course can use any color that floats your boat. But this nice heather gray looks really amazing as a neutral and you'll get a ton of wear out of it. You're going to need size US 6 or four millimeter circular knitting needles in a 16 inch and a 40 inch length. That's 40 and a half centimeters or 101 and a half centimeters. You're going to need size US 6, 4 millimeter, and US 7, 4.5 millimeter circular knitting needles 32 inches or 81.5 centimeters long, or sizes needed to obtain gauge. Two spare knitting needles of similar size, so they don't have to be exactly the same, uh, just to put some stitches on when you need to. A stitch holder and four stitch markers. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at the half twist rib. We're going to take a look at the shaker. Oh wait, the half twist rib is here. We're going to look a, take a look at the shaker rib stitch and we're going to take a look at beginning with a rolled edge and then picking up stitches and going from there. So this is a really interesting piece. You're going to learn lots of techniques. So make sure you click that subscribe button before we get too far along for fresh content weekly on knitting, crocheting, and other yarny stuff. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the ribbing. Now each of the main pieces begins with a half twist rib. So it is a knit one purl one ribbing except on the right side rows you're going to do your knit ones TBL which is through the back loop. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Now um, this sample that I have right here is uh, bigger <laughs> than you're ever going to need. You're not going to do that much ribbing but I wanted to make sure that we had a big enough piece so that you can see that on every other row the legs of the stitch are twisted. It just gives it some texture. It's just a pretty thing to do. So I'm on the right side row, which is the first row of the back. So it says slip one, and we're slipping one knitwise because that's what it tells us to do <laughs> when we look at the instructions in the front. And then it's knit one TBL purl one to last stitch knit one. So I've slipped my first stitch and it's knit one through back loop. So literally all that means is insert your needle tip right to left through the back of the stitch instead of the front of the stitch like you would when you normally knit. Purl one. Knit one through back loop. And while my sample is taller, certainly not as wide as your piece will be again. I'm just doing a piece on camera so you can see what the stitches look like. Purl, and we're gonna do that all the way across. Okay, let's see if we can take a closer look. All that does, you can see right there that the legs of the stitch cross over each other. And 
And then my last stitch is a knit one, just a regular knit one. On the wrong side row, or the second row, we're going to slip that first stitch knitwise, and then knit one, purl one across, ending with a purl one. So slip that first stitch knitwise. Remember, we're just moving it from the left-hand needle to the right-hand needle. We're not doing anything to it. And then this is a regular. We're not knitting through the back loop on these wrong side rows. And that's all there is to that. That's all there is to that wrong side row. So you will, of course, make this for as many stitches and as many rows as is called for in the pattern. And again, when you put your work down, you're trying to remember the right side and the wrong side, looking very carefully. You can see this is the wrong side of the work. There are no twisted stitches. This is the right side of the work. And there are the twisted stitches. So it helps you remember what side of the work you're on. So um, the next thing I want to look at is the shaker stitch. Now I would like to take a look at this shaker rib pattern. Uh, again, this is a two row repeat, right side and wrong side. And we're going to alternate on the right side row. We're alternating purl stitches with a knit one below, which I'll show you. And on the wrong side of the work, we are just doing slip one at the beginning and knit to the end of the row. This is a really nice textural stitch. It has a lot of elasticity, like a ribbing, but um, these knit one belows make these large, sort of, they almost look like cables, but it, it really accentuates the ribbing and once again gives a ton of texture to your final fabric. So let's take a look at the first row which is the right side row. So it says slip one. Again, we're going to do that knit wise because it tells us at the very beginning that that's what we should do. And then we're going to bring the yarn to the front so we can purl two. Purl two, and then it's knit one below, purl two across to the last stitch, purl one. So on the knit one below, instead of knitting in the front or the back of wherever of the stitch like we normally would. We're going to knit into the one beneath it, but we want to make sure that we go right through that center because if you look very closely, you can see there are one, two loops on top of my right hand needle. So I'm knitting into that stitch, but I'm making sure that I catch the stitch that is on the needle because I don't want it to unravel. So knit one below. So in the stitch below, the stitch you would normally knit, making sure to catch the stitch you would normally knit. Knit one below and then pop the whole thing off the right hand side. Or pardon me, pop it off the left hand side. So purl two. Knit one below. Purl two. Knit one below. The other thing I have noticed a lot of people do when they're doing this stitch or other stitches with knit one belows, they look at the row they're about to work on and they see this garter stitch ridge coming across the top and they think, oh no, I have messed up. That is not supposed to be there. But it is supposed to be there because you can see on the left hand needle on the stitches that I haven't worked in yet, you can see that garter stitch ridge. But on the right hand needle, the stitches that I have already knit, that weird ridge, it goes away. It goes away when I do the knit one below. So don't look in that and panic because, uh, again, a lot of people do. They look at that and they look at the photo of the stitch pattern on the beautiful piece and they go, mine doesn't look like that. I messed up, but you didn't. Knit one below, purl two. I'm on my last repeat coming up. Knit one below, purl two. 
and then it says I have one stitch left. It says purl one, and then again it says second row, but we also know that's the wrong side row. I'm going to slip one, knitwise, knit across. Now I'm just going to work on this row at the bottom of the first column on a page two that says shape shoulders. Obviously I'm not to the point yet where I would shape shoulders on this piece, but um, I want to just go over the SSK and the K2 tag and how that works in with the shaker rib stitch. So um, again, my sample's a little smaller, but the same, it, it works the same way. So I'm going to slip one to start, purl two, knit one below, so remember way down here, and then it says SSK. So that's slip two stitches, knit wise, knit two together through back loop. So it's slip one, slip one, put them back on the left hand needle, and knit two together through the back loop. And then it says pattern to last six stitches. So now I see my next one's going to be a knit one below. So I'm just going to make sure that even on these decrease rows, I'm going to make sure that the pattern as established stays consistent. And it tells me to keep going until there are six stitches remaining. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me get that last knit one below out of the way. Okay, so I have sti six stitches remaining. It says knit two together, knit one below, purl three. So knit two together, literally just knitting two stitches as if they are one. Knit one below. My yarn's already in the back because I just completed a knit stitch. Purl three. All right, so that's our SSK and our K2 tog decreases. I'm going to uh, do another row and we're just gonna take just a very brief look at the Pearl 2 together. I know that's familiar to a lot of you, but I just wanna make sure it's in here. So I'll be right back. So just a gentle reminder, because this uh, Pearl decrease does not come up in this section of the Swan Show, but it will come up in other places. For a Pearl 2 or a Pearl 3 together, I'm literally just going through two or three, depending on what it tells you, stitches at the same time, yarning over and finishing off the stitch. So that is a decrease. Let me do that one more time. Just a little gentle reminder. Purl two together. Just go right through two stitches at once. Purl them as if they're one. Now let's take a look at the rolled sleeve edge and how we create those sleeves from the bottom up. All right, now let's take a look at this rolled edge. This is how we're going to do the sleeves. So we're going to knit this, uh, this rolled edge separately. So my cast on is here. And then it says first two third rows knit, which is gonna give me that garter stitch ridge right there. Then we have a purl row, a knit row, a purl row. So that's rows four, five, and six. And then it says, repeat the last two rows once more. So that's one more knit, one more purl, and then cast off, which I did knit wise. And what, so this is what it looks like. This is the right, well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the right side because we want it to roll up. So let's say this is the smooth side of the work, right? So um, there's my garter stitch ridge. There's what looks like stocking stitch. And then when I let it go, it's going to roll up. And that's exactly what I want. I want that rolled finished on the sleeves. Now, the next thing I have to do, 
with your smaller shorter circular needles pick up and knit 56 stitches or 58 or 60 depending on the size you're making at the wrong side of rolled edge using garter stitch at cast on as a guide so i want that garter stitch to show however i want to do my pickups with the wrong side of the work facing me because the first row that i'm going to knit is a right side row. Clear as mud, so here's what we're gonna do. I want to pick up, I know this is gray and a little hard to see, but I'm gonna pick up through the two legs of the stitch that are on top of the garter stitch. This was my cast on. Now. I used a long tail cast on because I use a long tail cast on fairly frequently, but especially if I'm going to have to do pickups later because I just find it really easy to look under those two legs of the stitch and do my pickup and then it's not going to mess up my garter stitch. Okay, I'm shooting a little closer than I normally do. I want you to be able to really see what's going on here. So I used a long tail cast on. And so I'm going to go under both legs of the cast on. And I want to make sure I have my working yarn, <laughs> not the tail. And I'm going to bring that right through. And I'm going to leave it on the right hand needle. Now I'm heading off to the next guy. right under there, bring the stitch up and leave it. You want to make sure you don't pull so tight that you have a death grip on your stitches later. You don't want to make it too loosey-goosey either, although you can at the end go and sort of even it out a little bit. And you're going to do this all the way across, putting in as many stitches as the pattern calls for in the size that you're going to make. So that's what it looks like on this side. And that's what it looks like on this side. There is my garter stitch ridge. And there is the ridge from the pickups. Because once again, the next row that I knit is going to be a right side row. Now that I have all my stitches picked up, I'm doing that uh, half, uh, that half twisted rib that we did earlier. Except I am not going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, slip that first stitch because it's going to be in the seam. So I did knit one knit one through back loop, purl one, knit one through back loop, purl one, and I'm going to do that all the way across. And then the second row again is the same as before, only in this case we're going to start with a purl one, and then we're going to do knit one, purl one across, and we are not going to twist the stitches on the wrong side of the work. So there is the bottom of my sleeve. Again, I just uh, did a small piece and I did it just on the one needle size, but my rolled edge is rolling up towards the right side of the work when it's all finished. And that's what it looks like on the wrong side of the work. So again, no twists on the wrong side, twists every other row on the right side. And then you will just go ahead and finish the sleeves as they're written and do all the uh, assembly. So um, I hope you had a wonderful time knitting the knit wrap over swancho along with me. We learned the half twist rib, we learned the shaker rib stitch, and we learned about rolled hems and picking up stitches. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life. Please subscribe to the channel for fresh content weekly on knitting, crocheting, and other yarny stuff, and we look forward to seeing you again here real soon.